All right, I would like you all to give a warm Shmukon welcome to Zena. Hi, everyone. So I am actually doing a giveaway for whoever stays awake and is here at the end. So of course, I love Robert M. Lee. I can't help it. So I got his cute little book. So if you are interested at all in winning this book, I have this. Just put your Twitter handle, first name, whatever. Well, first name, last, in last initial, if you're interested. So I'm going to put this somewhere. I'll be here after the talk. So be sure to try to win that. And then also, as a member of Fuzzy Snuggly Duck, I brought little ducks to throw out. So, yay! yay. <laughs> so, if you don't want them, sit back there, because I don't know I can throw that far, far. I haven't tried. If you do want them, I'll just throw them out throughout the talk up here. All right. So, let's see. I will try to arrange these so it's not too disturbing. Okay. So I am here to share with you guys operationalizing cyber threat intelligence for a 24-7 CTI program. <sighs> I have a bunch of legal disclaimers here, so I'm just going to read them off. Um, I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to read them really fast. So Zena Olson is not speaking on behalf of her employers, thoughts, opinions, and anything else she says or does are solely her own and do not reflect her employers, because I have at least two right now. Everything Zena shares is just an idea about a single method. Anything she says is not the only way something can be done. She has not, nor does she, take credit for any projects mentioned in this talk. Everything she says is merely her own observation, and this presentation is for educational purposes only, and does not represent and does not provide specific information security or cyber threat intelligence advice. By attending, watching, listening, reading, or any other form of engagement with materials shared in this presentation, you understand that there is no information security professional and client relationship between you and Zena, Zena Olson, and especially no relationship with any of her employers. <laughs> the content in this presentation might not work in all situations. Please consult your preferred information security professionals. I apologize. I have more disclaimers, <laughs> more disclosures. <laughs> Last one, though, I promise. OK, so this one is just generalized. So basically, when you're thinking of a SOC, which is a security operations center, not all of them are created equal. So you have some SOCs with MSSPs, you have some with contractors, and each one has different visibility into the logs. So just keep that in mind. And then I, this may be my first year in Cyber Threat Intel, however, I have been in business a long time. And I have been around a lot of SOC managers and just general IT managers that have shared information. So even though it's really easy to Google me, and you can see one of my employers, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm speaking specifically about that employer. And then I'm going to remain high level on purpose during this presentation. Oh, managed security service provider. He asked what an MSSP is. Everyone good so far on the acronyms? I can continue? Yes? OK. Who wants a ducky? Yay. Here, I think I'm, there you go. Yay. Sorry. I don't throw well. I apologize. So basically, I grew up in two family, family businesses that were owned and run by the actual family. And then I ran a business for 15 years before getting into information security. So a lot of what I'm going to share are observations that I've seen interacting with cyber threat intelligence professionals and how I leverage the business experience to add value to cyber threat intelligence. Oh, yes, and attitude is everything. So 
<laughs> basically what Reese Witherspoon is saying is be positive and be determined and you can accomplish anything and I totally believe that. So what we'll be talking about today are the benefits to a 24-7 CTI program, how to even go about planning for that, how to engage the different people that are involved in the actual presentation, how to train the people that aren't necessarily CTI analysts, and then finally a lessons learned taken from many different employers, not just the one you can Google me on. All right. So, is there a right way to do cyber threat intelligence? Anyone? Anyone? Who wants to talk? Anyone? No? All right. <laughs> well, the answer is no. There is absolutely no single perfect right way to do cyber threat intelligence. Each company does it differently. Each company has a different perspective on it. I definitely am not an expert in cyber threat intelligence. I am a baby. But I still have perspectives that I'm going to share with you from many years of hanging out with really smart people. So as a cyber threat intelligence analyst, there are a couple things that I would really, really like to see. One is top-down buy-in from the top, top, higher, higher, higher ups. I'm not only talking just management, but I'm also talking like your VPs and even your C-suiters. So if they're not pro-security, they're not gonna care what you're gonna do for CTI. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's kind of common sense. Second one is a CISO, CISO, CSO on the board. So that way they can negotiate on our behalf and kind of have our back essentially when we have initiatives that we wanna push through. The next one is baked in security. So this goes to secured coding, to how you handle your social media, to pretty much every aspect of the business, you can integrate some form of security. The second one is information security is not a tax. So prior to getting involved in information security, I hated the InfoSec people because they always broke stuff. I couldn't access websites I needed. I couldn't ask, access like software I needed. It was really frustrating as a business person. So I kind of saw it as a nuisance and an annoyance. Now that I'm on the actual other side of the fence, I kind of get why it was important and why they did the things they did. So having a general attitude or Context for security in your organization is definitely really important. And then alignment of goals. So if one CTI team is like, hey, I would love to share intel outside of the organization, and another CTI team is like, no, we're not doing that, it's just gonna be butting heads the whole time, and that's just not fun. So if you have alignment of goals and objectives within your organization, I feel that That'll help you get things done a little bit easier instead of constantly fighting. And then, of course, alignment of threat teams. So sometimes in some enterprise security, enterprise companies, all of that, it seems that there can be more than just one threat team. So kind of getting everyone on the same page and having them align towards the same goals and at least talking, like communicating. Communication's great. So there is my wish list. The next thing is Enterprise 101. So before you attempt to do anything in this presentation, please consult with your manager. Otherwise, they will fire you. And then second of all, tools, making sure that you have tools, having a CTI program to begin with, because trying to go 24 seven CTI without actually having one in the first place, you're kind of missing some steps there. And then also too, having the proper logic, especially for alerts and different things within your organization, having a SOC that you can rely on. IOX, indicators of compromise, so knowing where you get those from, and if you're an IOC shop, 
knowing what to do with them is helpful too. And then having a tip that's a threat intelligence platform. So there's a lot of different ones out there. There's paid ones. You can have a homegrown solution. There are free ones. It's just up to you. I'm not here to endorse any particular product. And then also, too, having reports. So unfortunately or fortunately, a big part of CTI is report writing. So kind of having your format down and an idea of how you do those reports is definitely going to be helpful in this endeavor. Having the design and then also, to the proper communication channels set up. Who wants duck? Who's awake? Yay. Oh, 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 OK. Oh, OK. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. OK, so why 24-7 CTI is better? So it enriches the SOC. Uh, and essentially, so the SOC does a ton with alerts, right? And it's kind of like a really fast car that goes by. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't decipher if that's a tree or a cat. So when you interject some like tier one CTI duties, it helps kind of break that up so that they don't, um, they don't miss stuff that's really important. And then also too, it increases the likelihood that um, that they don't burn out from alert fatigue. So that's definitely a big issue that I've seen with socks across the planet, that uh, they just, they're just like, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done. And then also too, it contributes to maturing the CTI program. And as a CTI analyst, I work a lot. So having the SOC kind of help out, like after 8 p.m. at night, is definitely helpful because I like to sleep occasionally. And then finally, the bad guys are innovating, so why can't we, right? So we use what we have, just like the bad guys do, and we make a stronger program. So with this, I put some math together for you guys. Let's say I work a 40-hour work week. Then let's say you have a SOC that's 24-7 and they are operational for the duration of the time that your company is up and running. So that's 168 hours per week. So the deficit between the two is 128 hours a week. There is no coverage for CTI and threat-related activities. And then for a month, it's 160 for CTI coverage. And this, like I said, is assuming I just work 40 hours. And I honestly can't remember the last time that I worked just 40 hours a week. And then finally, over a year, it's 1,920 hours. And then the difference is 6,144 hours a week that there is no CTI coverage. And then finally, so tier one coverage. Essentially, with the CTI analyst, only 40 hours per week, there's a 24% coverage of threat-related activities, and that equates to a 76% no coverage. This is a happy slide. So let's say you're sold, and you love the idea of a 24-7 CTI. How do you get started? Well, here is one way, not the only way, just one way. And you kind of have to decide what works best for you and your organization. So something that I found digging through business stuff, because I'm an MBA IT management student, was the key success factor project plan. And basically, project, project managers use it sometimes. It's kind of like a SWOT analysis for projects. So what you want to do is plan. So you have the purpose, goals, roles, impact, responsibilities, contingencies, team engagement. Um, I thought it was a 50 minute talk. <laughs> You're freaking me out over here. <laughs> I like sped through a bunch of stuff and I'm like, I could swear it's a 50 minute talk. What, where did the time go? <laughs> 
Okay, so we are at 50 minutes. <laughs> I can tell you stories. I have stories, trust me, not about my employers, other stories. <laughs> Legal disclaimer, disclosure, disclaimer. All right, so I can keep going, yes, thumbs up. All right, so with this, contingencies, team engagement, project metrics, and quality control. Quality control is very important. Next one is processes. Of course, every manager is gonna love this because they love process. Workflow, who does what, when, where, how. Contacts, who do I talk to if something isn't getting done? Who do I talk to if I have questions about getting something done or who's handling what? Having a knowledge base of what people are up to, lessons learned, um, thready threat stuff, basically just having a thing, a repository, where you can kind of like brain dump so that you don't have a lot of the legacy problems that some companies may or may not have. And then quality control. And you decide what that means to you, but it, <laughs> I think it's important. And then people, so inner team collaboration. And then CTI analyst trace, so, uh, you know, it, it just depends. Like, do you want your team communicating consistently or do you want them doing other things? So really hone in what type of skill set that you want as far as interpersonal relations because there's also different personality types and sometimes one personality type can balance out another personality type. So just keep that in mind and try to use logic and reason and common sense with that and then quality control. And finally, power. So I mention this because you can sometimes end up with, with too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't need to elaborate any further. And then also to empower the CTI analysts. So basically a 24 seven CTI project, it benefits me because that means that I get to sleep more and I get to work you know, less than an 80 hour week, which is super awesome for me. So if you empower me, I will definitely be on board and like watch what people are doing and make sure the stuff gets done. And then finally, quality control. Who wants Ducky? Who's awake? All right. Oh, okay. Oh, eh, sorry. Next one. Okay. Okay, so you're asking yourself, that's great. Those are great concepts. So now what, right? So what you wanna do is frame everything that you do moving forward. So as a CTI analyst, I feel that everyone in my company is a customer. So I can go up to different departments and ask them, hey, how do you feel that, or think, depending upon what type of personality they are, how do you feel that CTI can benefit you? What information do you want? And then, this is, this is actually fun. It's called the critical success factor theory. So John F. Rockhart, an MIT lecturer, created this theory about, I think, 40 years ago, give or take. And it's tried, tested, true, researched. I mean, there's a ton of information on this. If you just, if you just Google it, Wikipedia, I mean, you'll see like ridiculous dissertations and a lot of research on this particular theory and what works well and what doesn't. Well, what I did is I took the most important features of this particular theory and I applied it to cyber threat intelligence. So it's kind of like if you've ever done a Gantt chart, there are critical steps and non-critical steps. So that's kind of what you do with the CTI 24-7. You produce requirements that are necessary for a successful 24-7 CTI program that provide the most value to the company. And this was the easiest way that I found to be able to approach such an enormous project. So um, the next thing is how the heck do you perform a critical success factor analysis? Well, the first thing that you would want to do, it's just one way, is talk to your inner team department managers. So have the hard conversations and ask them what they like, what they don't like as far as what's working or not working with your cyber threat intelligence program. Go outside of your 
intermediate inner team department managers and ask different people. Um, I mean, it just depends how your particular organization is set up. And then once you get all of that information, do a trial run and then tune. So constantly get that feedback and then make changes accordingly. Okay, I'm losing you guys. Ducky, ducky, ducky. Okay. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so, so what's a practical example of results from a critical success factor analysis? So when you go around and you ask everyone the gazillion million questions and have your meetings and do your surveys and send your emails and have your whatever conversations you have, you can kind of get an idea and boil, boil it down to what might provide value to them. And so here's just an example. It's not reflective of any of the organizations that I work for. And it's determine emerging threats, so any of the badness that's coming out, and then its impact to the company. So kind of getting, getting a really good grasp on all of the evil badness and bad things that bad guys are doing, right? And then also, too, to review intel. So with the different feeds and different intel sources that you subscribe to, it can't, you can't really automate it that well as far as like, hmm, does this apply to us or not? Like it's, it still needs a human to actually like read it and think. So I was like, hey, that seems like something really important and high value to different, different departments across the organization. And then inter-team collaboration. So if there's a proof of concept, which is a POC, if there's exploits in the wild, if there's a vendor, third party, breach, vulnerability, compromise, whatever, any impact to the particular organization that you work for, it seemed to me that it would be common sense that this would be a high value activity and other part departments would benefit. And then how are you gonna disseminate that information, right? So the last one is report writing. So you're like, Wow, that's really simple. What can I do with the high value CTI activities? So this is where the tier one task management and tier two plus task management comes in. So really quick, you have, you basically, you narrow down your high value CTI activities and then you kind of branch it off into a tier one and tier two. So the tier one is your SOC acting as a tier one CTI analyst. Like I said, this is not the absolute way to do it. It's just a way, a suggestion, an idea. And so, you know, what the SOC would do is basically on every shift, have every member on the SOC perform CTI duties and then have a shared threat mailbox so that it cuts down on, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Just have a shared threat mailbox because there's gonna be like 50 people in there, plus or minus. So trying to keep track of what um, is gonna be really difficult when you're juggling more than one mailbox. So that's just a suggestion. Another one is to assign the CTI duties through a democratic process. So sometimes there can be uh, really big personalities, for lack of a better word, and they tend to dominate everything. So if you just get like a multi-sided dice and have people roll it, that's a way, you know, pick numbers, whatever works for your team, just make sure that you have it be fair. And then let's say, so even though there are really fancy tools out there, there are also things that get past those fancy tools. So what are you gonna do, right? The SOC already has their full-time workload. So where do, where did the CTI level two and up come in? That's where they come in. They handle all the hard stuff. That'll be the next slide. And then report generation. So, I mean, if you have like 10, 12, 30 people in your SOC, it's a lot easier for them to get through creating reports than it is for your small amount of 
threat analysts. And it just depends on what your particular company does. I know one company, um, not even one that I work for, and they only have one CTI analyst. Um, other ones have you know, a little bit more. Some of them don't. And then finally, to perform initial analysis on the hits to the intel and escalate it to DFIR or threat accordingly. And of course, I mean, this is a given like tier one shift turnover. And here's the tier two plus task management. Of course, the shared threat mailbox, assigned CTI duties through democratic process, even if it's just two people. And then they handle all the heavy, like, technical lifting. Or you can send it to defer, whatever you guys want to do. That works for you. And then, so the sock, it's kind of like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the tiered socks, how they have, like, tier one, tier two, tier three. Well, it's kind of like that with CTI, where they'll review the materials and the reports and all of that to just kind of spot check that everything is happening the right way and the way it's supposed to. And then finally to approve any imports that the SOC finds of IOX or whatever it is that your company does. And then a CTI analyst tier two turnover so that they don't have to continually, so that the SOC doesn't have to ask the CTI team, the full-time CTI team like, where is this? Where is this? Are you done yet? Do you, can we close it? What are you doing? So what now? Like, that's great. Like, what now, right? This is where the workflow processes come in. So you have the SOC, right? And they have CTI tier one duties. And they perform all the preliminary research for the 24-7 CTI team. You know, if something comes in at like 3 or 4 in the morning, they handle it. If it's like 8 PM, uh, they handle it. And then the CTI team. They review the work from the SOC, and then they inform on blocks or possible mitigation strategies or gaps in their detection or anything else. Like they perform a lot of the higher level analysis, and then they send things to Defer, where Defer either does like a ban, like that's not happening, or yes, we'll consider it, we'll continue like doing our Defer research and then get back to you. And then CTI will basically ensure that the IOX become detection so that uh, we can kind of keep track of badness that happens. So sounds fantastic. How do I implement this? This is where training comes in. All right, who wants a duck? Who wants a duck? Who's away? Oh my god, I cannot throw that. Oh my god. Got it. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Shit, I mean, oh no, you didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't say that at all. Delete, RSA, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So training methodologies. I can't stress this enough, but the mindset of a CTI analyst is a little bit different than a SOC analyst. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just a little different. So we review things and we're like, instead of it's like, we're kind of like, is this bad or is it not bad? Should we care about it? Should we not care about it? Why would we care about it? When would we care about it? How would we care about it? What would we do about it if we cared about it? So basically instilling that mindset in the SOC and using a lot of different training, basically training them with, their, with the actual mindset of reviewing intel, and reviewing like, a ridiculous amount of data. It's like it's like logs, but less fancy, because <laughs> you're reading a million articles and a million research reports and like trying to decide what's important and what's not. So, I mean, really, there's only so many hours in a day. And then demo process. So, I mean, seriously, if your manager was like, yes, start on this right away. And if you're a CTI analyst, all you gotta do is just have your like screen recording software, whatever it is, WebEx or Zoom or whatever you use, and then basically just show like how you engage with being a CTI analyst. So that's your IOX, your reports, 
you're surveying the environment to find out what the heck is wrong or not wrong, collaboration with other teams. So, I mean, literally, if you got the thumbs up, you could start doing this today. Another thing is tool access. So, on my Twitters, I haven't reviewed it in a while, but it's on my list. I have like a security researcher thing, and when I'm in a bind and I need to know what's going on like yesterday, I just review that list. And pretty much no fail, the people on there have been pretty consistent with being on top of stuff. So creating a list kind of like that for yourself. I know we could get into the Twitter debate of CTI analysts and how CTI is just Twitter, but it's not, I promise. It's just a tool that I use because there's a lot of smart people on there. And then RSS feeds, that'll help kind of consolidate all of the different data and feeds and information that we go through. Um, templates, SOPs, and then finally collaboration. So workspace access, because how are they gonna talk with the other teams if you don't give them access? And then communication channels, of course, out of band communication. Finally, Intel Access. This kind of comes in with the shared threat mailbox. And then also to kind of adding, adding them to a lot of the Intel vendors that you have. I'm not gonna name names. I'm sure some of them may or may not be sitting in this room. And then feedback. So you want feedback on the processes. And then you also want feedback on the deliverables of the people that consume the actual CTI data. So you don't wanna just like be throwing out reports left and right, and they're like, yeah, that's great. I'll just set it over here and never read it. Like, that's a lot of work to like have no one read it or get any value out of it. So definitely get the feedback and produce what they want, because if they're happy, then they're like, yay, CTI and SOC and all of them are great. Like, like they should get funding, right? We should keep our security team. So. Is there anything else I should be aware of? And yes. So project considerations. Implementing a 24-7 CTI program, while it sounds easy and it sounds really simple, it's actually not. It seems kind of like hurting cats a little bit. So if you're gonna tie in multiple projects in it, uh, I highly recommend having like chewable bites. So you have to decide, you know, do I want a tip? Do I even need a tip? Do I need to roll that in? Do I need to create logic? Do I need to do a reorg? Do I need to hire people? Do I need to find workarounds? Do the tools that we have even work with what it is that we want to do? And then of course going live and then tuning, documenting processes, support, make sure your vendors follow through with their SLAs, that's it. Some ideas for success, celebrate milestones. So I can't stress this enough, this is just my opinion, but I feel it's important to celebrate every little win that you guys have uh, because it can get pretty daunting when you're implementing a pretty big project. And then leverage your vendors, so let's say that you want to import data from a vendor, but you need them to, you need to write a custom API script or something like that. So instead of like trying to figure all that out, you can leverage them and be like, yo, can you help me out with this? And then you can keep doing what you're doing. They do what they do, and then you implement the two, and it works. And then track progress. So I know it's like managers love vis visualization. So if you track your progress and you're like, hey guys, like we were at 20% and now we're at 80, you're doing so great. Like I just, I feel like it helps people kind of get an idea of where they're at with what they're doing. And then use common sense, break stuff down into manageable bites. How can I get management to say yes? All right, who wants duck? Who's awake, who's awake? <laughs> Did I give you one already? <laughs> All right. Did I give you one already? Oh, darn, okay. 
Ugh. Are you guys really thinking I can throw that far? <laughs> Yay. Okay. So you have to speak manager. Managers speak a very special language. It's called metrics, and it's called risk analysis. It's called SWOT analysis, and it's called comparison reports. I mean, if you've ever looked at the qualifications for a CISM, I don't know if you've ever read through some of the stuff like that they're tested on the CISM. It's like, they're like, don't ever do a project unless you have metrics or something like that. I just, I remember reading something like that in a Facebook you know, study group, of course that's Facebook, so I don't really know the accuracy of it. I guess I'd have to get a CISM book, but I'm pretty much assuming that a lot of managers, period, regardless of whatever, they like metrics. So get management buy-in. So with SWOT, here's an idea for the threat side of it. Analyze SOC analysts having access to the threat intelligence feeds in comparison to the risk exposure of not having a 24-7 CTI program. You have to get creative. It works, I promise. And then a comparison report. So what I mean by that is compare the amount of work and actually what can get done of not having a 24-7 CTI program compared with having a 24-7 CTI program. You'll be amazed. And finally, didn't you say something about lessons learned? I could have swore, you know, I read that in your abstract somewhere. So I'm just gonna do some very general, broad observations, not based on anything other than observations. So quality control, all the things. Back in the day, I'd probably say, what year was that? 2006, so 2006, I was working for a combined real estate mortgage company. I was a sales manager, really fancy. And somehow I managed to have to be in charge of a software development project. I'm not sure how those two mixed, but I was. So I had to deal with all oversee uh, developers, overshore, offshore, whatever, not here in the US, developers. And what I learned through that is that whenever they coded or did anything, I had to follow up and make sure it was done right. And it had the actual specifications of what I said needed to happen. So that was drilled in me because that experience was very painful. And then finally, um, you know, just quality control all the things. So if you are doing like data migration from one tip to another, just ensure that any script that you have that automatically feeds into your TIP program, that everything is accurate. Like test it out in an Excel file, make sure everything is right in the proper columns. Because if you have a bunch of like hashes alerting as IPs, and like it's just, just don't do that. It's just gonna create a super crazy bad mess. So just quality control and you'll be happy, you'll thank me. And then get this tier two CTI analyst on the same page. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about diversity and inclusion. So if you have a top-down focus of diversity and inclusion, what that looks like from my perspective within your organization, it would be about team building and camaraderie and teamwork and relationship building. When it's on the actual product that's produced, it seems to me that sometimes it can come across as competitive or um, uh, like microaggression on and on. So definitely if you're going to embark on this, like um, kind of have a focus. Do you want it to be on building relationships and building uh, collaborative spaces, teamwork, all of that, team player, uh, or do you want it to just be about getting stuff done as quickly as you possibly can? Because it's two totally different focuses. I mean, you still get the work done, it just, it just depends. Just think about it. I won't, I won't dive any more into it, but uh, as a female, I prefer like teamwork. I prefer to have a team that cheers for everyone and 
um, where we all like support one another. That's relationship building. And then trust building. So if you're a CTI analyst and you're in a meeting and you realize that someone was talking about something that they Googled that was incorrect, because everything on the internet is right, of course, uh, that can be a little uh, disconcerting. So ask your CTI analyst. They're there to answer your questions and give you feedback that's accurate. And if they don't have the answer, they will sure get it for you. More observations. So project mapping. Kind of like the thing that I started with at the beginning with the key success factor. Make sure that you have that spelled out because it's a lot easier when you know the duration of different, of different uh, micro tasks or whatever you want to call it so that you can get an idea of like, okay, so this is ending there, then that means I need to prep this for this next thing that's happening. So I should probably do this, this, and this to meet that deadline. So that type of thing, I mean, common sense CTI mindset, why you care about something and why you don't care about something and just, I mean, be really patient with the sock because I mean, <laughs> I'm still learning that every day, you know? It's like, oh no, a zero day. And then I like, I like look into it. I'm not gonna name names, has to do with polar bear. Um, then I'm like, oh, that's not a big deal. You know, or oh, like we're good, we're good. You know, like, like not everything is on fire 24/7. And then break the project into manageable chunks, and then management address the gaps and enforce CTI duties. So, let's say that as part of your program, you said, hey, sock, like before you send it to defer of stuff that potentially got through our perimeter enter it in our tip for future detection so that we can have metrics around that. And they're like, yo, I'm not doing that. Make me. So that's where management comes in and they're like, hey, like, let's do this. Or you change your process. Like, it just depends, like, what works for you. And then diversity of thought. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty common sense. So here's a potential example. Let's say that your uh, DOJ indictment drops and there's a third party vendor that's named in a breach and let's say that you've worked already like 60 plus hours and it's like a Thursday and you're like, oh my God, it's 8 p.m. I'm tired and I just wanna relax with my cat, right? So this is where the SOC can come in and they can be like, hey, it's okay, CTI analyst. We've got this. We will run the IOCs back. We will re perform the analysis so that when you come in the, in the morning, everything will be done and then you can notify and escalate accordingly. So this is definitely a super win, especially with all of the stuff that keeps coming out. And I mean, it's like every day, it's like something else and you're like, oh my gosh, Again, like really? So um, it's definitely helpful to do this. The sooner you do, the sooner your CTI analysts will thank you because they like sleep. So key takeaways, benefits to a 24 seven CTI program, the key success factor project plan, the critical success factor analysis, training methodologies, and my observations. Credits. So my employers, both present and past for inspiration, and the awesome SOC, every SOC around the world. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all the hard work that you do in protecting all the companies and making sure we don't get pwned or finding the pwnage faster. So thank you to SANS Women's Academy, Executive Women's Forum, Women in Security and Privacy. I can't thank them enough. Um, I've gotten a lot of scholarships through them, so definitely donate whatever you can. And then Women in Security and Technology, Fuzzy Snuggly Duck, 
Jared Peck, Ben, Scott, because Scott was the one that put the making better security presentations. So I always give his stuff out. I'm like, do what he says. It's right and it's good. Matt Edmondson, who's <laughs> right back there. Lizbeth and all the supportive ladies and allies in InfoSec. So thanks for coming out. A little bit about me. I am the president of the Chicago chapter of Women in Security and Technology. Um, let's see, I created the Women in Information Security Study Group, Sands Women's Academy 2017, YAR Exchange member, MBA, MBA IT management graduate student, graduating June of 2019. I'm GSEC, GCIH, GCFE. I'm an RSAC speaker for an IoT panel and a peer-to-peer -peer session on leveraging tactical threat intelligence for strategic decision making. So basically a bunch of managers speak. And then, of course, I'm here. Art into Science speaker, Thea Isaka, ISSA speaker, Sands on Demand SME, CTI for Fortune 500. There's my website. I have a bunch of, I already put my slides up there. So on my website, if, I think if you go to the me page and you scroll down to ShmooCon XV15, you'll be able to pull my fancy slides that are not key notified and like use them, do whatever you want with them. I'll try to upload them to SlideShare as well. And I like to create fancy things for women in information security. So if you like threat hunting with Splunk or practical malware analysis, or um, Nina is actually gonna be doing a Python course with us coming up here, I think on the 31st. Basically, I just talk to anyone that's willing to listen and I'm like, hey, there are some ladies that would love your time. So that's me. And then also too, um, I've noticed that there are companies out there Basically, I want to spread the happiness and love and like do like a good touchy feely like, hey, let's feature your work. I'm gonna like ask you really awesome questions. So if you're interested at all, there's a tab on my website for a podcast for a form and I'd love to have you on there. We'll feature your work. It's on SoundCloud right now. I haven't done a, an episode yet, but anyways, sign up for that. We have the giveaway, I have stickers, I have cards, and then I have ducks. So anyone have any questions? Since we have a little bit of time left. You want a duck? No. A question, okay. <laughs> So the question is, have I come across any CTI or SOCs that are using automation to handle any of the tasks or robotics, you said? Well, automation. Automation? Um, well, I mean, as far as like automatic run back of IOX that... that you yeah, yeah, um, I mean, I'm sure there are a few SOCs that do try to, CTI teams, whatever, that try to, to automate as much as possible because that's what's kind of drilled into you. So yes, it is possible. It just, honestly, it just means that you need good coders and you need a good logic team on your side because as a CTI person, I can't do it. <laughs> like, I need people that know you know, the particular language to be able to do that. So it is possible. Any other questions? So, an actu so he was asking if I put together a SWOT analysis for what would work for companies deciding to implement a 24-7 CTI program. Is that correct? Did I hear that accurately? Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Um, no, I have not done that yet. I, the way I hold it in my mind is if your business is required to be operational 24 seven, you know, like let's say you have customers and they shop at like 3 a.m., then to me, um, if you have a sock that is not understaffed and on and on all of the different management issues that come in with dealing with the sock, then yes, like maybe go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of CTI in there. I mean, honestly, it's, it's I think on a company by company basis and kind of like your common sense, you know, like if the sock is overwhelmed and they have like 50,000 new events that they have to work through, they're not gonna wanna do CTI stuff, right? Because the new events just keep piling up and piling up and piling up. So really getting with your logic and design team or whomever creates the logic behind the alerts and kind of making sure that uh, they figure that out and they make sure the feeds are good, if that makes sense. I know it sounds really general, but it's, it's on a company per company basis, so. Any other questions? Oh, I need to stop. All right, so I will be, well, since I'm the last talk of the day, I will be wherever they tell me to be. And I have a book for a giveaway. I'll put your name in a little drawing. It's a really cute book for CTI, especially if you like books. And then um, stickers and all that other stuff. All right. Thanks for coming out. Hope I'm glad you're still alive. And uh, good luck. <laughs>